What's going on, everybody? This your boy, King Gabe, here once again. And, see, in response to the little video that, you know, EJ, EJ the Supreme, and I just made uh, pertaining to the Power Rangers, you know, what we would think about a whole animated series and everything. Uh, in response to that video, I thought this would be a good time to put this video up on the channel. Uh, again, it's another another little blast from the past of my from my old channel uh it's one of the uh Roy the royal talk review that christina and i did excuse me of the mighty morphin power rangers yes mighty the mighty morphin power rangers movie very very first movie that they did uh 1995 yes 1995 um the go go power rangers so so yeah, thought I'd put that up, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of add to the Power Ranger flow a little bit, as well as you know other stuff that'll be coming up in the future. Um, definitely like, share, and subscribe. You know, hey, uh, special thanks, super chat, buy some of our available books, support us on Patreon, just like your boy EJ the Supreme, Big Sis Casey, and also. Iceman Universe Go! Iceman Universe Go! Check out the, uh, along with this, uh, check out their content, you know, with, uh, and they say wrestling, sport, uh, different, uh, sports, fitness, cookie crumbles, food reviews, stuff that's gonna be coming up in the future with me and EJ. Um, uh, definitely, um, Casey, uh, and Casey's channel with vlogs and, uh, fan videos like that Doctor Who, um, little thing that that uh that she made with some of her friends there and also definitely uh EJ, I mean okay I mentioned him uh Iceman's reactions to Ed, Ed Nettie, and Naruto so yeah check all that out and everything uh hang out with us on Discord and Facebook and let's sell each other some stuff in the Macari app and also just to let you guys know seeing as how this um this me and Christina in this video uh just like how I have collabs with uh, with good old EJ, uh, and I did and say there's uh, there's gonna be some other collabs uh, coming up. Uh, definitely, me and Christina uh, got got some plans for some videos that you know me and her want to do together for say to on the channel. Um, I definitely uh, like I say I have to talk at the you know at the have to get it confirmed from her first, but. Definitely uh, want to do some things with Big Sis Casey. Uh, you know, talk about some things on here as well. You know, maybe some might my, my uh maybe she might have some ideals there. I know I do, but yeah, she probably but she but uh, but hey, you know, definitely that's why I say get a confirmation because she might have something in mind there that we can go with. You know, uh for you know for me and her, um and also uh let's see EJ. Christina, uh, Casey, uh, I think that, oh yeah, but yeah, that's pretty, yeah, pretty much, um, yeah, so pretty much in the future, Christina, as well as Big Sis Casey, um, pretty much like, you know, that little flashback of the world talk me and Casey did with the Bumblebee review, so, um, now of course, uh, like I say, this is a flashback of a royal talk, and, you know, uh, Obvious, so yeah, like I say, and there were a few exceptions of reviews earlier, you know, like the overdrive thing and all that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, um, it'll, it'll probably be something, you know, it just all depends on what we come up with, um, in the future there. So, yep, so definitely be on the lookout for that. And with all that said, let's dive right into it. This is me and Christina talk about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, King Gabe. And this is Queen Tina. And we, as if you know what you clicked on, you know what we're about to talk about. As, as, as that old theme song say, Go, go, power <laughs> bitches! Do, 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 do. I know you're excited. Oh, yes. And, uh, of course, uh, before, we get into, before we get into the review... Um, def since we're uh, talking about Bible from Power Rangers, definitely gotta 
uh, a little uh, respect to Jason David Frank, of course, who um, who has left us last month there. Really tragic there. Um, like I said, there's speculation of what happened, but like I said, the fact that, I mean, just the fact of the matter is tragic in itself there. And, yeah, like I say, you know, uh, a lot of people have said online, uh, power will always be with us there in our hearts. Um, I could imagine a fan art of the Green Ranger on Earth, but in he but the White Ranger in Heaven. Oh, yeah. The Green Ranger will be his physical body, but the White Ranger will be his spiritual body. Mm. Oh, White Angel kind of thing. Yes. Ah. Because yeah. of the white color. Mm. Something like that there. Yeah. <laughs> and then remember, he did wear other colors too, like uh, Red Zeo and Turbo and Black Dino Thunder. And of course, we do know um, that um, not sure when they're going to release it, but he's but he already uh, did recording for the movie Legend of the White Dragon. Uh, it was post, so I'll, uh, I'll probably try to look it up, see when that's coming out. But he did. Um, that was the last thing, as far as move, as far as you know, working with movie that he did, which I think is an independent film. But you know, you know, our old boy Jace, yeah, he, him, the Power Rangers is like Eartha Kid to Isma. Yes. He's always committed to his work. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, I know you probably may have seen these before, but... Show them to you there, just as a, as a way of remembering there. Oh. And, of course, the autographed picture we got from him there. With the five, uh, all the five rangers, including the white ranger in that picture, which, of course... Uh, that's the team that we'll see, that we see in the Mighty Warfare Power Rangers movie. <laughs> With the White Ranger and everything. <laughs> yep. It would have been nice if Jason David Frank would live longer, especially he had one more year away from 50 years old. It, at, at, well, next year he'll, he would have been 50. Yep, and even, and possibly even more than that, could have had like grandkids. Cause um, yeah, like seeing his daughter's kids, and you know, our is a a lot of the kids of, uh, which I know he's seen kids of a lot of his fans. Yes. That grew up with him, but even but even uh, another generation there. Yes, it will also be nice to walk his daughters down the aisle when oh, they get there. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said they would never get that experience. Yeah, like I say, it's um. Like I said, there was um, a lot that went on with him, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, I guess you could say, I guess one hint of it would be similar to Robin Williams' scenario. Yeah. Yes. A lot of time, time stuff goes on that we don't know about there, even. And not and not saying that he's a bad person or anything. Oh, we, no, t t trust me, he was really cool. I mean, he treated everybody nice and everything, but yeah, that's one thing. One thing to say, sometimes, you know, some, because everybody has a different mindset, sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, people just may, um, so you never know what they might be feeling there. There are times people take, ne take negative comments as from, from other people and they, and they take, and the, and the person takes it personally that they want to just leave this earth. That's why you gotta be careful what you say to folks too. Or they're just hurting on the inside in general. They're just hurt, mm -hmm. so and they don't know why why, why they're hurt. It's one one reason why it's always important treat people night treat people right. Careful what you say to them. Yep, and you and if you notice somebody, if you uh, notice somebody like that, you know, you know, do what you can to open a hand. So you know, just. Even if it's even if it's just no more than you know, just talking, just talking generally, with because you know they maybe they may not want to tell you what's going on, might be personal, but sometimes just you know just having a general just saying, hey, how you doing, and uh, you want to go want to go catch a movie with me there. <laughs> sometimes that can just uplift them, you know. 
or in general, just make a person happy. Right. Like, we all need joy in our lives. Just like um, Lion King with Simba, um, my I had a theory that Simba probably would have uh, would have ended his life after the death of his father if Timon and Pumbaa hadn't intervened. Because they, um, even though he didn't tell them what the problem was, the fact that they saw he was sad, the first thing they, oh, they just did what the uh, best that they knew to do to try to cheer the guy up, you know. And I know Simba's a young cub. Mm-hmm. If Tim Timon and Puma did not intervene, well, Simba would just leave this earth. Yeah, which as a young cub. That's why, that's why they say you know, just doing that. Can make you a uh might not have no might not have fancy powers or morphing grid, but sometimes just making the person happy can make you a hero. Yeah, imagine Timon and Puma as well as Simba as human beings. Mm. Imagine them human, and what this scenario would be like as hum if they were human. Probably would be uh, not too different there. The fact that they're talking and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Be pretty much pretty much the same there, but still would make them heroes there. Yeah. yeah. And Simba, if he was human, he would be like anywhere between, I would say, 8 to 12 years old. Older elementary. Something like Still that. Still sad about his father passing. Mm. So like the age Batman was with his parents. Yeah. At least at least Bruce Wayne still was still living. Mm. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah, that's so uh, ba- bottom line. Yeah, make sure y'all uh, treat people not, treat people right. And nice and kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, cause that, cause that could be, that could be the biggest help. Uh, that could be just as big of a help as any power coin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, speaking of power coins, uh, let's see how they help out here. <laughs> let's see how they help out here. But God rest your soul, Jason. That's why we're, that's why we're reviewing this movie there. <laughs> or if most people say, Godspeed. Guys, oh yeah. Godspeed. <laughs> Just don't be the Green Goblin saying it though. Oh. <laughs> don't 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 be him. It's got to be Spider Man. <laughs> but he will might he will he will mean it in a negative way. Yeah, that's why I say don't be the Green Goblin. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay, so so getting into the movie and everything. Uh, one thing to definitely note that this movie is a this is the only, well, let's see, there was, there's two there's two Power Rangers movies. Uh, this one has a lot of things similar to the show, like the cast that, that play the characters and stuff like that. Um, some of the stuff that we would see later in the series, like the Ninja Zords and all that. But it's a different continuity and pretty much different universe. Where it's sort of like, sort of like the movie is another variant of these people. Hmm. Like, as we heard explained in Loki. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like another variant. Uh, that would be pretty interesting to see if uh, if those variants all of a sudden crossed over into the mainstream power. You like Sort of like the way when they had that uh, Dimensions in Trouble 25th anniversary special. Where we got to see uh, RPM and Dino Charge rank. And Dino Charge Ranger pop up in our main Power Ranger dimension. Yeah. Thanks to Wes from Time Force. Yeah. Yeah. So the movie starts off with a bit of narration of the general Power Ranger synopsis. Uh, pretty much that they start off with six teens. You know, originally we start off with five and Tommy came later. But maybe this universe is a little different. <clears throat> now the narration at the beginning of the movie reminds me of Star Wars. The beginning of Star Wars with the narration. Funny you should mention that because that's kind. That's also used with the Turbo movie. Yes. Yeah, except only difference is Zordon narrating, and this one I think is Dosia. Yes. That we'll see. That we will see later in this movie. Mm. Mm. So. So of course, uh, some of the things about uh, I mentioned about the Ninja Zords. Uh, some of the um, oh yes. Um, the Rangers uh, shown in this movie, we got Rocky Red, Aisha Yellow, Billy Blue, Kimberly Pink, Adam Black, and of course Tommy as the White Ranger. Originally, um, when the show started, Jason was red, Trini was yellow, 
and Zack was the Black Ranger. And halfway through the second season, in the show's canon, they got called to a peace conference and, and gave their powers to Rocky, Aisha, and Adam. Of course, in real life, there were some things going on behind the scenes. Don't really know the details. Not going to go into that. Conflict. But, but yeah, uh, a lot of y'all probably know about it. But anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, they, they switched the Rangers halfway through the season. It would have been nice... Um, I would. It would have been interesting to see how the movie would have played out if they had a if Jason Trini and Zach were in the movie, being that they started the series and maybe and maybe the change of Rangers started after like season three or something like that. But you know, things happen. You know. <laughs> well, if they were treated better and decently, at well, well, mainly money wise as well as just respect in general their their wishes they would have stayed yeah it um union union thing yes did you remember yeah it did kind of have something to do with the union and stuff i think it's, it was a non-union that's that yeah that's why i say it was because they were they were trying to um they were trying to uh request that they be union because there was some stuff they were doing that they felt the union should have been there, sort of like, you know, jobs that do have the union there. <laughs> I think nowadays, most of the oh, most of the Hollywood productions have unions. Yeah, especially major... Major movie productions. Yeah, like Disney and Fox and all that. Yes, the big the Right. Big but see, Saban, at the time, um, yes, he is a big name because of Power Rangers, but... In a way, he I guess you could say he kind of was an independent type of thing, type of uh, company. Um, sort of like some of the small companies that you hear of now. Like, um, just as an example, um, the company that was responsible for the live action Ninja Turtle movies. Uh, that, you know, with the Jim Henson costumes there. Yeah, a lot of those type of companies. Uh, but they become big names after their movies become hits and stuff. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if most independent film companies have unions. Not the big, not the that are not well known. It depends on how their on how their companies run. I think for the most part they might not because Saban was not union there. And plus they have a budget, right? Which explains why in the TV series when they first started, it was basically you know. As some people would describe it, Saved by the Bell scenarios mixed with Godzilla stock footage. There, hmm. uh, translation: American footage of you know everyday teen life, like Saved by the Bell, and mixed with the stock footage from the Super Sentai series. Imagine the cast of Saved by the Bell as as Rangers. Well, that'd be a step up. Maybe it'd be a continuation from the TV series. Well, I think there were six teenagers in Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Mm. Well, free females and free males. Oh, well, well, it depends on how Saban works. That, that could work. You could maybe have the two females and three males start off, and maybe you'd have a female Green Ranger then. <laughs> I would go Unless for Unless the, there's a purple Ranger. Well, I go. Well, of course, he was going by the stock foot. I would go for that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's all up on the guy who's writing this stuff there. And also, um, which I mean, that still could work. Cause, I mean, you had Trini, who was the uh, Yellow Ranger female, and in the original Sentai, the Yellow Ranger was a guy named Boy. B O I. Right. Which, so yeah, if they if they made that work, um, I'm pretty sure a female Green Ranger shouldn't be too much of a problem, especially considering that the Green Ranger has that armor on. <laughs> yeah. Heck, why not a, a female Red Ranger wouldn't be so bad either to change things up from time to time. <laughs> and that would be great for fan fiction. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have Say by the Bell cat the Say by the Bell cast members as Rangers. It'll be an awesome fan fiction. Mm hmm Yep. But but apparently they apparently they didn't go that way there, but hey. Um since we brought it up, um, I guess some of you guys watching might might probably, as soon as we finish talking about this, might go start writing it. 
Who's a say by the Bell fan? <laughs> oh, it's the say by the Bell. It's morphin' time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> but sort of, I'm, it's like, well, sort of, if we don't get back in time, it's like, we won't be able to get our assignment done. And the midterms are next week. Hmm. <laughs> I think that the structure of the planet warrants more more importance than midterm. <laughs> I know the say I know Save by the Bell has a hangout called a Max. Hmm. I guess that'd be there too far. Well, she's a diner. Oh. Well, I guess somewhat like like it there. Yeah. Hmm. I gotta say the juice bar actually is not a bad idea for for a hangout there. I mean, hmm. I mean, I, I sure go for some juice. <laughs> Don't keep me start with smoothies. Oh, too easy. <laughs> yep. So after, of course, the narration, we see the rangers skydiving for charity to save an, op an observatory. And also there's a mention about Ryan's comet coming. And, of course, they do quotes uh, as they jump out, similar to how you'll not only when they jump into the Zords later in the movie, but even a callback to season one when they would when the first time they landed in the Zords, the the dinosaurs. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, Zach here. Oh, Zach here. Kickity groove it. <laughs> Billy here. All systems go. Tree here. Ready to rock. Kimberly here. We're ready to fly. Jason here. Let's get to it. <laughs> and power up your crystals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much a callback to that. <laughs> hey, imagine actual teenager skydiving. Actual ones. Only if they know what they're doing there. <laughs> I think in real life, I think you have to be like over 18 or 21 to skydive. Thanks. Yeah. It might be mm. an age limit. Mm. In real life. Possibly. You never know. <laughs> I mean, if I've you are a minor, I think you have to sign some type of consent in order to before uh, skydiving to your parents. Well... <laughs> I probably wouldn't know, considering that I, yeah. <laughs> one that does sky dives, so I wouldn't really know that. Well, yeah. if I if I wasn't afraid of heights, I would go for it. But mm. I have a fear of heights. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, uh, so after that, um, after that, um, everybody makes some amazing entrances as they land. Especially Tommy with his surfboard. <laughs> Cowabunga! <laughs> and we get introduced to a kid named Fred and his dad. And let's just say if I was in this uh, as as the kid, for instance, I'd probably be seven at this point, considering this was 1995. Hmm. And probably, and I guess instead of it being uh, me and my dad, since my mom hadn't remarried at that time, I guess it'd probably be me and one of my... Me and uh, one of my uncles there. <laughs> so, yep, in this film. <laughs> so, a little bit later, after all of that, a bunch of construction workers come across a very odd-looking manhole cover where, as a certain someone in SpongeBob would say, EVIL! I, we know there's no Ninja Turtles in there because they're in New York City. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't see them until Power Rangers in Space for that crossover. <laughs> Except those turtles would be kind of crappy looking. Yeah. If they... Let me just say, if that was... Since you brought it up, if that was going to be a Power Rangers Ninja Turtles crossover, which there was, the way I would have done it would have been to use the Jim Henson version from the movie trilogy with the better costumes and crossover with, say... Possibly season three of the Power Rangers when they got the ninja powers. At least they will have a better budget. Yes, and also it would make sense with all the talk of ninjas. Hmm. Yeah, and plus you could even get the turtle since they had two set of Megazord since they had two sets of Zords. You could have had the Rangers in one, the turtles in the other. Hmm. Possibly put the turtles in the Shogun Zords. <laughs> yeah, and that would have been pretty cool to see on screen. But we didn't get that there, and someone explained, I actually mentioned this to somebody, and somebody explained, well, they probably wouldn't have the budget to afford the Jim Henson costumes, uh, something like that, which, so it's cheaper just to make some extra crappy costumes. Take coming out of your shells tour, for example. As well yes. as the Oprah show. Oh my God. Yeah, you would, you would think they would want to look their best for Oprah, at least. <laughs> 
Don't get me started with the Christmas special. Christmas kinda was was a little easier on the eyes than the than the concert and the next oh. mutation, but as well yeah. as Oprah, the Oprah show. Right, but it still was no Jim Henson. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, you think you think if the turtles were that popular, they'd be able to afford access to? I mean, since they're already made. Yeah. <laughs> they do make a lot of money. Mm. Why not? Yeah, it made more money than they even thought they would make. <laughs> Considering also, as the nostalgia critic pointed out, when the first movie was in production, no studio really wanted the Turtles until they saw the success they made after the movie aired. <laughs> yeah, they changed their mind when they saw the money. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, of course, uh... Seeing as how this is mo this movie is placed in a different continuity and universe than the TV series, the construction workers probably aren't aware that manhole covers like this that are evil would unleash an evil force and probably be dangerous to unlock. And they found a really large purple egg. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Of course, I guess even even if this was in the TV series universe, you could probably say that they probably were not aware of what happened to the astronauts that released Rita in season one. I know in the in the first episode, the astronauts found a trash can. Yeah, with a big jewel embedded in it. <laughs> oh yeah, but I get, but also to be honest, yeah, you kind of could get away with the astronauts not being aware that that was something evil in there because it didn't really look evil hmm. until they opened it. <laughs> but yeah, this manhole cover kind of seems a little obvious on the nose. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so, of course, with this unleashed, the rangers get alerted about it. And they teleport to their updated command center in this universe. Whereas Alpha and Zordon inform them about the egg containing a morphological being known as Ivan Ooze. And tells how he brought how he brought terror on the world years ago with his mystic with his machines known as the Ecto Titans or something like that. Yep. And of course there was a group of warriors, much like the Rangers, that trapped him in a hyperbolic time in a hyperbolic chamber. Which, of course, is what the construction workers just opened up. A hyperbolic chamber? Mm-hmm. I guess referring... I guess also referring to that egg there. Let's just say the command center on the inside looks not only just more space, but it's also futuristic. Oh, like yeah. It's, like it's something from the 2000 era, even though the movie was released in 1995. Like they stepped into the future. Hmm. Yeah, would have would have been kind of nice to see uh, something similar to that carry out in the TV series, you know. Just since since Power Rangers was was banking quite a bit of money there to make this movie. Well, in the series, it's just a basic command scene. Mm. True, but it does have an iconic feel to it there. Yeah, it did match the era that that it took place in the nineties. And one could say that um, that Zordon was probably just working with a small space in order to, in order to uh, in order to avoid a lot of detection there. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. However, before the Rangers get back to invest to uh, get back uh, to where the egg is at, Lord Zed and Rita arrive, along with Goldar and and, a, and some type of pig monster. Yeah, that looks. This pig kind of looks like, uh, almost look, almost makes me think of the pig from Food Fight episode in season one, but in a different form. It's really odd, even if this is a different universe, it's kind of odd that we didn't get, uh, like some of the other minions with them that's already been established, like Finster, Squall, and Babu. We just got this thing here. And the only one they brought back was Goldar. Pretty much. Speaking of Goldar, I think they like Goldar the most. Well, obviously he's the main. And he's, he's the funny. main henchman. <laughs> he's funny. He's about. Um, it was 
uh, let's just say I found out from Media Hunter that he act that the pig was actually supposed to be related to Goldar or something, but they cut that out the script. Hmm. And that's and, just weird. Yeah. Well. Well, hey, it could be weirder. You could. You could be like Rita and have a baby brother that's a that's a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Rita had some flesh at one point, human flesh. And then it was dissolved due to some accident. Probably something involving magic. <laughs> or in the, I don't know exactly the full backstory behind this, but in the Sentai, yeah. Rito, act, Rito, yes, he did have a human form he transformed into. And his human form was like a punk rocker. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Try <laughs> to take that as you may. <laughs> sure. So... Of course, uh, they open the egg and and release Ivan Ooze, played by Paul Freeman. Now, hmm. yeah, he looked and, like a comedian. Mm, he hmm, never know. He could be. Hmm. If if not, he definitely was funny. <laughs> sort of like sort of like some of my employees at work. <laughs> two guy, two guy. <laughs> Hey, imagine Robin Williams as Ivan Ooze. <laughs> that would be... Him as a villain would be kind of interesting there. He'd, it'd be like Evil Genie. And he, he would do a lot of monologues. Oh, and, and, st- and probably could still pull off being threatening too there. Because remember when he got mad at Aladdin? Uh, well, I guess we'll have to find a way out. Uh, excuse me? Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? Did you bring me here? And all of a sudden, you just gonna walk out here like nothing ever happened? I don't think so. Not right, pal. You'll get your wishes, so sit down. Whoa. <laughs> and then went back to and he's extra here, but here, 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 here. Anyway, <laughs> say, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, he probably could pull that off. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Robert Williams is a man of many faces when it comes to acting. Sit. Much, much like a lot, much like a lot of known actors there. Hmm. Heck, uh, heck, I could even see Eddie Murphy pulling this off because of his role as Buddy Love. Hmm. <laughs> He'd be especially if you if I giving Ivan Ooze this laugh. <laughs> the Ooze is back. <laughs> Power Rangers. <laughs> Oh boy, I, I maybe it's better with Paul Freeman because I think if Eddie Murphy was doing it, the adults might be laughing so loud the kids wouldn't be able to hear the film. <laughs> yeah, it might might be a bit overboard on the humor. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine there being a humor meter that explodes. Uh oh, that's too much humor for this movie. <laughs> so, of course. Uh, and also, it would have been really cool to see Ivan in the series, but because of the makeup job used for him, yeah, it's understandable that he's only limited to the movie. <laughs> Plus, it's also Americanized. Right, and so is Lord Zed and Rita's costumes, because they are slightly different from that of the TV series. And there was no Japanese stock footage at all in this movie. Oh, no. <laughs> right. That's a completely one and a half, one and a half hours of American footage. Mm. With an American budget. Mm. A one hour and a half. One hour and 30 minutes, yeah. With an American budget. Oh, yeah. The Ranger, Once the Rangers get there, he sends out his foot soldiers to fight the Rangers. So, uh, they start off fighting them on Morph, but then seeing how powerful these things are, well, you know what it's time for. It's, it's Morph, morph inside. <laughs> hey, we said that together. <laughs> Almost uh, like a video I saw on, on uh, Jason David Frank's uh, TikTok page, him and a fan doing that together. Hmm. He was like, "Okay, do, do I need to do I need to be serious when I say it?" Hmm. Okay. It's more of it. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that really made this girl's child. Did, he, did did you ever see his last video on his TikTok? His last video before he passed. I may, I might need to rewind. I may have, I may have. Yeah. I know I looked, I, I know I've looked at quite a few on this channel, but 
Yeah. I might need to double check there. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, let's just say, let's, about the costumes now. Those costumes are freaking awesome. They're armored up and everything, and and you still get the iconic Power Ranger look. This is what they should have used for the 2017 movie. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying that the 2017 costumes. I'm not saying that they're like awful or anything. They. I could tell that some work went into those designs, and they probably were trying to go with a futuristic look. Probably make it like on par with, say, something you would see in Marvel. But. Could, but the problem is, compared to what we see here in the in this movie, yeah. well, you could kind of tell that they're the Power Rangers in 2017, and also because they tell us that. But just say if you didn't know that, that there was even a 2017 movie, and you just flipped through your TV and saw them pop up like this, hmm. and no Power Ranger theme song, you probably wouldn't catch on to that right away. Yeah, if you didn't know about this move, about the 2017 movie. So, yeah, may, I say even even if they still tweak them a little bit for 2017, yeah, still make them look close to the 1995 movie because that's a good example of modernize, of the modernized old look. <laughs> and, it, and even with some of the features they add to it, like Rocky's little... Uh, scanner Terminator remote thing, or Aisha, or or um, Aisha's uh, power lights. Hmm. It still looks like Power Rangers. <laughs> now it reminds me of of a lighter version of Iron Man's suit. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and 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 exactly, and, and you still get a Marvel feel. Yeah. Also, considering that the Power Rangers uh, had comics put out by Marvel. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that could work. <laughs> Yeah, only thing, I just think that, um, like I said, I don't hate the 2017 movie at all. I just feel like they did, I feel like they worked really hard, like, because it is from Saban. Yes. He, I could tell, I really could tell he worked hard on it, like, say, Zack Snyder with his movies. Yes. But there was just a lot he that he may have over put into some of the scenes that maybe he should have put less into. Yeah, man. I think, yeah, I think he kind of, with the, um, it's one thing to have character development, but I think he may have spent a little too much time with that part. Character development. Yeah, with, like, them unmorphed there, and not enough time with them as rangers. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it looks like the type of movie that can continue with some, with some improvements and adjustments. Yeah. Like what you mentioned. Also, but there is one, just one little fault, and it's no, and it's no fault of the movie makers. Um, uh, this is, it's not, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I think would be out of their control, um, because of how movies are produced, unlike a TV series. Yeah, it would. I don't think it would be very successful, uh, especially with the same cast of teenagers. Yeah. Yeah, keep that. If they were young adults, maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, it probably wouldn't. It probably be a lot easier. But since they're supposed to be teenagers with attitude, yeah, there's only so much in the movie production because you have to, you, know, you got to consider the time it takes to make each movie as opposed to a TV episode. So, which is one reason why Power Rangers works better as an episodic uh, show. And if movies are made, usually a movie within its TV series there, or something similar to that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I think it, it works better the way it was in the '90s there with that type of style. Yeah. Yeah, but at least, but at least Saban can say that. Hey, I did put I did put a pretty big budget movie out there, because hey, you don't know unless you try. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You, that's the only way you truly know. If something will work or not, you gotta at least put it out there. <laughs> so yeah, I, so that so that's why I'm not. I'm, so yeah, I'm glad he did put it out. So so we could all find that out. <laughs> hmm. Yep. So back with the with the movie, the Rangers of course have a, have their morph fight with the ooze monsters, and. They do use their martial arts a lot, which is a staple of the show. And it's and they have some really good moves. 
even with some silly sound effects, but they're still really cool to watch. Hmm. However, the weapons are kind of questionable there. It's not the same ones from the show. Yeah, that's that's the only nitpick of that scene is why couldn't they get their power to keep the power weapons even even if you updated them a little bit there and might say, well, maybe because they want to make them more realistic like weapons. Uh, I I refer you to the last scene of the fight where Tommy pulls out Saba. He he gets to keep his weapon. Yeah. Hey guys, meet Saba. <laughs> Yeah, if he could get Saba, the other rangers should be able to get their other weapons and even have the power blaster. <laughs> yeah, the axe, the daggers, the lance, the bow, and the sword. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> However, their powers, is, just as they defeat the Ooze Men, their powers are, are then, um, they then lose their powers, and it's because Ivan Ooze has entered the command center and thrashed the place. <laughs> And also quoting some random, and also quoting some random liners. Oh, the things I miss! The Black Plague! The Spanish Inquisition! The Brady Bunch Reunion! Why not throw in something about Michael Jackson while you're at it? <laughs> uh, imagine Ivan Ooze pop up in this day and time. He would have a lot to say of what he missed. A lot. Oh boy. Maybe the return of Ivan Ooze. <laughs> I'm back again! Ooh, what I have missed! <laughs> the, the rise of the internet! <laughs> the SpongeBob movies! <laughs> and the. And the beginning phases of the MCU. <laughs> oh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I got. Although I did, although I did catch a glimpse of some of the stuff that they do have out now, like She Hulk, and that's not too bad. Mm. <laughs> She's pretty sexy. Hey, <laughs> uh, yeah. well, he did think Kimberly was cute. <laughs> And how does he know about all the, the stuff he missed? You know, he was, he was, um, I would say, barricaded. The same way that the genie knows about stuff that's past his time in Aladdin and being encased in a lamp. Mm. Yeah. Wait, remember how he magically poofed a boo into a car briefly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the genie has seen some things in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, he is a magical being. And and in Ivan Ooze's case, he's a morphological being. Hmm. <laughs> I guess they kind of I guess they kind of work similarly. Hmm. Yeah, and also and also the Rangers losing their powers isn't the only thing that happens. Uh, remember, like when the Green Ranger trashed the command center in Green with Evil, and Zordon was cut off from the Rangers. Well, in this case, Zordon doesn't just get cut off from them. He is literally dying outside of his tube. And, and and I think you mentioned that Zordon reminds me of my grandfather just laying there trying to trying to trying to stay strong as well as breathing every breath he takes in order for him to live and and keep fighting to keep fighting for his life. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it did. yeah. It was the kind of the first thing that came to mind rewatching the movie. Yeah, this, they, um, and also I gotta say, even I know this is a sad moment with Zorna, but to see how he looks out out of the tube, the person that's um, uh, Dave, like David Feeling is who plays Zorna. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the way they got him and, and you know made up and everything, you can't even see the guys. Uh, ears and it really gives him an alien like look mm -hmm. like which, a half alien half human which which does which um I don't know how they did it but it definitely worked considering that Zordon is not from this world there mm -hmm. yeah and also and also just something to note um like in this in the TV series, it's mentioned that he discovered the powers of the power coins, but he didn't invent them. Mm. 
which is why there were times that there were some things that he may didn't completely know about them, but tried his best with what he did know, mm. Mm. which left the door open for other, for, for other world building with it. <clears throat> so, uh, the only so how are the Rangers gonna get their powers back as well as save Zordon? Well. There's, on the planet Thedos that Alpha informs them about, there's a great power source. So Alpha sends them to get it there. Meanwhile, Ivan traps Zed and Rita in a snow globe and decides to take over by sending out another set of foot soldiers to Tangu Warriors. You know, in the, you know how in season three, Let's go, Tanga! Let's go, Tanga! Our own theme song. Uh -huh. Too bad you don't get that in a movie, but it would be cool if they did that in the movie. Well, seeing as how the movie came out before the TV series, they oh. probably hadn't thought about it there. Oh. They did have a little music sample play. Maybe they were trying. Maybe they were testing some things out for the TV series. Yeah. Also, speaking of the series in the in season three, the Tangus were born out of. Out of regular, out of monster eggs that Rita's brother Rito had brought for them as a wedding gift. Oh. Yeah, and here Ivan sneezes them out of his nose. You? Yeah, I'm not really sure how they relate to ooze like the ooze men, but okay. Hmm. I mean, they do have some of the purple coloring in them, but yeah, they don't really seem ooze like to me. Hmm. Hmm. Also. Considering the type of comedy that Ivan Ooze has, could you just see him when he make when he brings up the snow globe? Just look at the camera and say, "Get your own Lord Zed and Rita snow globe for only nine ninety nine. Available now if you act and if you act now, you can also get an Ivan Ooze T-shirt." <laughs> and how ironic, he's he's promoting his he's promoting his Ooze to the kids in a later scene. Hmm. Surprising he didn't throw in the snow globe with the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> and he's pretending to be a wizard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he he was he it did look like he was dressed as a wizard. Yeah. I was at first I was gonna say a clown, but he he uh, but that outfit did scream wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a clown wizard. And kids might think that his ooze is magic. <laughs> eh. Well, in a way, it kind of is. But probably not the kind of magic they're thinking of. <laughs> mm. The Tangas attack the Rangers, and while they do their best to fight back without their powers, the Tangas show that they're a little too powerful for the Rangers, and they're rescued by Do by Dosia, hmm. the planet's warrior. And she leads, and after rescuing them, she leads them to get their nit. Uh, she leads them to a sacred plateau. Where they get the powers of the Ninjetti. And however, um, and one thing she states to them is that she can't go with them past the plateau, um, towards, you know, where the sacred powers are because she'll aid as rapidly as Zordon. One thing to clear up, she's, it's the, what she states about the aging rapidly is if she goes toward the path of the powers. Beyond this plateau, the mm -hmm. rest of the the rest of the planet is not what's affecting her. It's the path to the powers. Mm -hmm. And as for the sacred animals, Rocky ends up getting the ape. Aisha gets the bear. Billy the wolf, which is pretty cool for, which is pretty cool giving him the wolf. Mm -hmm. Especially how cool the wolf sword is. Yes. Uh, Kimberly gets the crane. And Adam gets the frog, which he's kind of depressed about at first, until she tells him, Yes, a frog, like the one you kiss. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> like a vice versa of this. <laughs> Instead, it's her kissing him, though. <laughs> to get a handsome prince. <sighs> I know it made Adam's day. I'm a frog. <laughs> I know he liked that. Oh yeah, especially considering that your frog or can also have a not only a super long cool tongue, but I think possibly in the show in the Sentai shoot fire. Wow. Mm. And of course, Tommy has the majestic falcon sword. 
<laughs> which we all know how iconic that Falcon Zord became with both of the Ninja Zords that we will see in the TV series when we see it in the eye of the Megazord. Huh? Eee! Eee! <laughs> Especially in the sunrise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the eagle flying. Oh, yeah. I mean, the falcon flying. Oh, falcon, yes. <laughs> yep. And one thing I definitely got to say, um, with, with the journey to the plateau and also to the sacred powers, definitely reminds me of, uh, it's not, it's not for, it's not a long scene. It's just kind of brief montage. But it definitely makes you think of like old West movies back in the 70s and 80s there. Mm. You know, and uh, almost makes you want to go watch a movie like, say, Old Yellow, The Great Chase. Mm. <laughs> say, or, any, or, any, or as I say, anything that's Western related. Yeah. I'll use your horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. I kind of imagine I'd be having a horse at the store sometime when I stop, when I all of a sudden have to make a sudden stop, like the horse goes, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile on Earth, Ivan uses his ooze to control the parents of Angel Grove into digging up his machines, known as, as I stated earlier, the, ec the ectomorphic titans. <laughs> and as they so he can wreak havoc and, of course, take over the world. Of course! And we know it's Fred witness witness all the parents being brainwashed. Oh yes, yeah, Fred um He had the kid. By father especially when he noticed his dad his dad acting strange. Yes. Hmm. That later on he informs the other kids. Hmm. And there's also and there's even a and there's even a small scene where Ivan's a little bored during the work <laughs> and says You Dance, do, 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 do the swim. <laughs> what is now, he scar? Say I can do whatever I want, and then he's bored. And and all oh, like when he told Zazu to sing all those songs for him. Yeah. Huh. Speak since I mentioned Michael Jackson earlier. Huh. Why not have him do the moonwalk? Hmm. <laughs> or smooth cri or all of a sudden, yeah, do some of the dance moves of smooth criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after all, Ivan Ooze is the villain, like a criminal, so that would kind of be fitting. <laughs> but we don't get that. Also, also, as silly as this scene might seem, it's no different than what Master Vile did in Season 3 when he was taking over the world. He he went to the juice bar and had a party. Into the world party. <laughs> Everybody does! <laughs> the end of the world party? Oh yes, this actually happened in season three. With all the villains? Mm-hmm. I know in reality it wouldn't be so funny. People won't be partying when the world ends. Pretty nah, pretty much only in TV land. Yeah. And I don't we mean We would the just station. be in a panic. And I don't mean the station. <laughs> yeah. We would just be in a panic if that happens. Mm. And speaking of panic, he awakens the machines. And I gotta say, these are some fierce looking bugs. Now, one thing people have complained about is the CGI in the movie with the with the bugs and the later coming Zords. The CGI isn't what really bothers me a lot. It's really the overuse of the chrome in the CGI. Yes, the CGI is obvious and sort of like a video game cutscene there. Um, yes, I get that. But like I say, it's it's basic. If the if the chrome was turned down some, it wouldn't look it wouldn't look so bad. And even with it looking kind of kind of cheap compared to later year CGI, it was still it would still be easier to look at there. Um, now the chrome on something like the bugs, that's not so bad. Cause okay, I guess that's how they're supposed to look. But it's the Zords where it's really like yeah overloading there. Mm -hmm. Especially when they formed the Megazord. <laughs> and of course, um, one thing about these bugs there. Yes. They look a lot like the design you would see in an anime called Dinosaurs. <laughs> the bugs. Mm hmm. And those, any of y'all remember? They, Wham Slam, Mr. Dino, just stop the, it's the dinosaurs. Wham Slam, Mr. Dino, just stop the dragosaurs. Dinos are back dinosaurs. 
Yeah, that it, where it had actually the 2D Japanese anime mixed with CGI. Mostly the CGI used for the dinosaurs. <laughs> Too bad it didn't, it didn't gain the same popularity as Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, there was a lot of animes they tried out there, but you know. <laughs> mm. That's one thing about animes, they, if one, one doesn't work, they'll bring out another. <laughs> so, they don't give up. <laughs> Yes. As as any art as any author or artist should. Keep fighting. And I know there's a lot of animes out there, popular or unpopular. And in some cases it's not so much it may be um some some cases it may didn't get the following it it was trying to get when it first came out. But sometime years later they get a cult following. Yes. As they call it, you know, where you know, say they see somebody talking about it on YouTube like the nostalgia critic. And next thing you know, it's popular because everybody wants to check it out. Because I saw this guy screaming about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Christmas with the Cranks. Mm -hmm. So, so of course, after fighting some skeleton dinosaurs and rock monsters, the Rangers unlock the great power, restoring their original powers, and give some ninja zords that match the sacred animals. Say, and let's just say the way the zords come out at first... They almost make you think of what you would see with those origami zords in Samurai, how they were real small at first before they grew big to form their Megazord. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty interesting to note there. So they come back to Earth, but before they can go to help Zordon, they have to use their new zords immediately up against Ivan's machines. And during that, Fred gets all, as you, as you mentioned earlier, gets all the kids along with Bulk and Skull to save the parents. And we see what 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 the what the city is like with no parents at all, just kids running the t city. Sort of like Pleasure Island, except more G-rated. There. Yes, they do whatever you they they do whatever they want to do. Would have been cool if it happens in real life. All the kids rule the world. Maybe. I maybe like um. Well, maybe. Well, obviously not in a. I would say probably like maybe some party or something, like a party theme or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. the teenagers would take the, the role as adults. Something, um, that kind of reminds me of something I saw years ago where kids were in the place of the adults. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was a cartoon there. I'm not completely sure how it worked or what the premise of it was, but that's the best thing I remember from it. Hmm. Mm. I know Bulk and Skull were the only teenagers in a group in a group of kids. Yeah, that was kind of odd that we didn't see any other uh, teenagers. It's almost like them and the Rangers are the only teenagers existing in this world. Which we know that's not true because they see other teenagers at school. Yeah. Hmm. Which is strange. Yep. Yeah. Eventually, um... And of course, we do get the Zord fight there, which individually, yeah, they're not even with with the Chrome Overload. Individually, the Zords don't don't look so bad. They are fighting against the bugs and stuff, and you get some pretty cool uh, some pretty cool scenes with them. Sure. But Ivan decides to merge with one of his remaining Titans. I feel big again, <laughs> and the Rangers have to form the Ninja Megazord. Tommy flies off in the Falcozord to save the kids on the monorail before combining with them. And they take it into space. Hmm. In order to get Ivan in the path of Haley's Comet, which destroys... Doesn't mean Ryan's Comet? Oh, oh, hey, oh, I thought it was Haley's. Okay. It's Ryan. Ryan's Comet. Uh, which destroys Ivan and frees the, the kids' parents at the same... Just in time. After that, the Rangers arrive at the command center, which it looks like it's too late for Zordon until Tommy realizes that they should try to use the great power, and it revives Zordon and restores the command center. I know Tommy quoted, even though we don't have our powers, we are still the Power Rangers. Oh yeah, which is a staple of how, the, of how Ranger teams are, pretty much like any hero should be there. Yep. Same goes with heroes in real life, even though they don't have superpowers, but we have we but we still save people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because it's in our hearts to save people and care for people. Oh yeah. 
And with all and with all that happy and with all that happiness and good ending, what better way to celebrate in the Rangers case than with lobster or probably in our case, uh probably would be chicken or turkey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially a big turkey. <laughs> or or since it was kind of a summer blockbuster, hamburgers. Oh yes, I I will go for the hamburgers. Oh yeah. <laughs> And Fred wonders if he'll become a Power Ranger soon. Well, never know. Maybe you might in this universe. Hmm. However, in the TV series universe, well, we wouldn't get a kid until Turbo. <laughs> which is Justin. Unless, if they did play this in the series, Fred, since he mentioned about the Gold and Silver Ranger, maybe he could have been the one that Trey from Triforia passed the Gold Power Staff to. Yes, and he'd be the right age for him by now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And, and, of course, the movie ends with a post credit scene of Lord Zed and Rita coming back, seeing Goldar sitting on the throne. <laughs> and sort of has, and it sort of references to Starscreen in the G1 Transformer movie when he had the coronation. <laughs> and Galvatron, and Megatron came back as Galvatron. <laughs> coronation, Starscreen. That's just bad comedy. <laughs> and... Except unlike with Starscream, uh, they don't kill them or anything. <laughs> hmm. But they are pretty ticked. <laughs> and that's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie there. <laughs> it's pretty overall, besides the nitpicks about the Chrome Zords and the lack of the and the lack of the power weapons, overall it is it is definitely a good nostalgic film and definitely worth checking out, uh, especially among Power Ranger fans. Hmm. Yep. And, and, and like they say, it is morphin' time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What do you think there? Well, to be honest, I do. I did see only like a few episodes of the Power Rangers as a kid, but I'm not a major fan of it. But if I was a major fan of Power Rangers, I would definitely go for the Pink Ranger as my favorite ranger. I think I remember I had a Happy Meal one time that has a Power Rangers toy and the only toy I have at that at that time was a the Morpher with free power coins. Was it in 1995? Yeah. Okay, probably was because of the movie. And I think I had a Power Rangers cup with a Pink Ranger, but it was from a store somewhere. Ah. Uh, it was one of these 32 ounce cups. Well, I guess if you was the Pink Ranger that Kimberly was, Obviously, I guess I'd be in Tommy's position since they had a thing. I think I had a bit of a curiosity of dressing up as the Pink Ranger for Halloween, but it didn't come to fruition. Oh. <laughs> I was just surfing channels then, back then. And just ran across it there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep, it definitely is a big staple of the 90s with a lot of people there. Oh. Especially, especially the stuff that's put in the movie, you know, might like a lot of movies around that time. You definitely know the time period. Sure. And yeah, and it definitely, uh, and Ivan Ooze is definitely a really good villain in this movie, as well as a hilarious villain. Oh yes, he, and the, and the good thing is he can be very hilarious, but also you don't want to you don't want to make him mad. <laughs> hmm. Or else he'll do something terrible to you, if you do. Pretty much like he did, like, as he demonstrated there, when, have, do you recall Sword Art of Eltar? Ah! And he had a personal grudge with Sor against Sword Art. <laughs> I think he's heard of him. <laughs> and then, and then the, the same one cuts to when Rita makes this comment, finally, a real man. Like, excuse me? That's what Lord said, my thing. Uh -huh. Like, excuse me? Yeah. Of course, Rita changed her tone when he shot the ooze in her mouth later. Finally, someone shut her up. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Mr. Potato Head would have said the same thing with his wife there. He'd probably be pretty mad someone doing that to his wife. Took away her lips. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Like, what are you trying to say? We talk too much? <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> or we nag too much? 
Also, another thing that probably would not be would not be taken so well in the series, uh, when he trapped when he traps Rita and Zed in the snow globe, he asks Goldar, "So, you want to follow these two Dingleber? Uh, we never we never liked them anyway." <laughs> Yeah, Goldar, I don't think Scorpina would be so happy with what you're saying there. <laughs> Considering how you and Scorpina were given a wedding by Rita in the Sentai. Oh. Yeah, that's, Scorpina is his wife in the Sentai. <laughs> they even had a child together. They did? Oh, yeah. What was their child like? Uh, as a baby? Look, human. Hmm. But then again, they are space aliens, so... Don't know what the baby would, would, how the appearance would go as the baby grows, though. <laughs> and we don't know what gender was the baby. Yeah, I'd have to check the Sentai again for that. I'm just going to assumption that they may have had a son. I'm just going by assumption. Hmm. Could be. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But that would. But yeah, that's um. Well, at least for me, that's uh. All I got. Say with it along with uh, rest in peace, Jason David Frank, and uh, hopefully, uh, definitely like what you hear from the heavens there, mm. as well as also to any of to the as well as also Trini from the heavens, and to all the Rangers that we still have on Earth, especially um, Amy Jo Johnson, especially Hedda, because uh, I recently um, recently um, shared words with her online there, um, definitely. Um, Def, if you're watching this, I'll um, probably send it to it for her to see. Hope you definitely enjoy, enjoy this and put a smile on your face to hear to hear from a couple of fans uh, geeking out about the Power Rangers. <laughs> and 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 good old Tommy. <laughs> yeah. And they uh always that was one uh matter of fact, uh Jason he he meant he meant he mentioned about the whole thing of Tommy and Kimberly at the Comic Con there. Yeah. Yep, I have to say, I have to make sure I save Kimberly. Tommy! Mm. No, Kimberly! <laughs> yeah, had a good time with him there. It was red, as I say, and one, and one thing he definitely seemed like he liked my, um, uh, he, um, he might he, um, had an interest with my Star Striker comics there, because, um, we went, during the Q&A, you know, you ask, you know, everybody, you know, asked a question obviously related to something about him or the Power Rangers franchise. Uh, before I asked my question, uh, first thing, uh, first thing he blurted out when they got the mic to me to ask my question, Star Striker. <laughs> yes, he said Star Striker. Uh huh. <laughs> and then and and, ask, and then asked me to, and and ask, and actually requested me to tell the other fans a, a, just a little bit about what about what my comics were. So, yeah, he definitely is a pretty good dude there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep, definitely, uh, definitely a really good memory. <laughs> yeah, I hated what had really happened to him. It's, mm -hmm. It sucks. Especially, you know, good people like that there. Yeah. yeah. Would have been nice if we did see him old. Yeah, or even brought our kids to see him, yeah. Yeah, what, he lo what he's like as an old man. I know he will still be cool and kicking. Oh yeah, that's one thing I stated on his TikTok page on a video where he was talking to these two little girls, um, saying it's morphin time. I don't get it. I didn't get it either, but that's what we said in the show. <laughs> so that one thing I commented on that video was he's like the he's he's the cool dad every kid wants. <laughs> that most every kid wants in this generation. <laughs> Yeah. And or or in some cases the cool grandpa. So. Yeah. And um was one of the uh was one of the thing oh yeah, um say oh yeah, oh oh you was talking about oh uh, the CMO. Yeah, but one thing at least as um to the other Rangers, you know, just letting y'all know we all of us fans, you know, we we still we st we're still here with you guys, and um, you know if you go just just letting y'all know if y'all going through something, um, you know don't be afraid to talk to somebody or you know or just you know say a, uh, you know pray or you know pray over it to God, and and still talk and still talk to somebody. I mean you know that's one thing about it. God placed everybody here to help one another. Yeah. 
And do not be afraid to express how you feel. Exactly. Yeah, you got. I mean, I understand that there may be some people you don't want to tell, but every. But I feel like everybody should have at least one or two people that they can at least try to confide. That they can confide it, even 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 if just a family there, because one thing about it, when you talk, if you talk about what's going on, that's that's going to be at least the first step to to finding a solution. Yes. It's like the steps to recovery. Right. Admit to your problems. Exactly. And then it, it gets it off your chest. Uh, the person that you're confiding in could suggest something to you. or And something could even come to you from talking about it. Like uh, like that scene in Lion King 1 and a half when Timon was uh, complaining about Puma and Simba leaving him to go back to the Pride Lands. He's like, and Rafiki showed up. He said, oh, "Wait, wait! Don't tell me. Did you find Akuna Matata? Why, yes, I did. Thank you, thank you much. And I'm happy, happy, happy. Oh, oh, oh! If you're so happy, why are you so miserable? Well, gee, I uh, maybe because my friends left on this long journey, and and my Akuna Matata went with them. No, nope, Rafiki didn't say anything. This was all to my own talking." And all Rafiki did was just shake his head, yes. Hmm. And Damon, upon realizing, uh, do you mind? Hits Damon on the head. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad we had this talk. Hmm. My work here is done. <laughs> yep. Sometimes that's all we need. <laughs> just to let it out and then some, and then it comes to us. Hmm. Yep. Or... Or, or I guess technically speaking, sometimes uh, letting it out uh, allows the good Lord to bring it to us. Yes. Yeah, by hearing ourselves mention it. <laughs> hearing our misery. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they go, oh, I could have done that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so, yep. So, yeah, other, every, all the other, all the other rangers out there, Amy Jo, uh, Amy Jo, and everybody, the yeah, ones def- who are still alive. Right, definitely. Yeah, we all we all love y'all, and yeah, we want we definitely want y'all to hang around. To hang around. Let's say until oh don't don't leave us until the Lord calls for you. Yes. Yeah, let let it be when the, uh, which I know that would be years later. There's an old saying: patience is a virtue. Right, because here's the thing: if you go when the Lord says go, that means you accomplish what He put you on this earth for. Because he has, because he always has purposes for everybody in this earth. And that's and by and, and by living out our lives, we can accomplish those purposes. And you can also fight for your life. Mm-hmm. Yep. So definitely do that. Uh, is there anything you want to add? To? Mainly, it's in it's a good film. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a good film, even though I'm not I'm not much of a Power Rangers fan, but. It's still good. You sort of like the. You sort of make me think of the style of Doug Doug Walker right now because he's he's not really he yeah because he he will tell you in a minute that he's not a Power Ranger fan at all. But when he saw the twenty seventeen movie, he was like, I like this. He just still had respect for the fans. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and he actually did like the twenty seventeen film, and even like say Pokemon for example, he didn't like it, but. He saw Detective Pikachu, and it was like, "This is cool." Yeah. yeah, and and one thing he confessed about Pokemon is that the he really just didn't hate it. He just never got into it. Yeah, and he was only going on like, "I hate it, I hate it," because uh, just to have something to say in his video. Hmm. So yeah, he that was one of his confessions after seeing Detective Pikachu. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, so. Yep. What's anything else there? Mainly, if you feel hurting on the inside, just let love come into come into your life. Let somebody hug you instead of re- rejecting the hug. Even when you're even when you're down or or even just happy, just let somebody hug you. Or and all and also in addition to that, as a little song I heard on the radio uh, years ago in the nineties, just let. Ask Jesus to come into your life. Yeah. It was a little a little kid was singing it. 
Yeah, just let people come into your life, mainly positive people, when you're down. They may help you. Hmm. Yeah. We all need love and joy. Yeah. Especially, in, especially what we're facing right now, we need love and joy. Yep. Like, as, Carl, as Carlton the Fresh Prince say, Everybody needs somebody sometime. When he was trying to get Will and Jazz back together. <laughs> yes. And, and December is the month for that. Yep. Yep, so. So, yeah, definitely do that there. And, uh, I guess, uh. Yeah, yeah, that's all I have to say. Oh, okay, well. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that and everything. Uh, you know, morphin' time. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, and definitely be on the lookout for some more stuff uh, that me and Christina will be doing in the future. Uh, as well as also more stuff with AJ the Supreme. And, like I say, if all goes, if, if all goes well, some stuff with Big Sis Casey, um, you know. Uh, be some, uh, and who knows what other collabs could possibly come up, like I say, but those are the, th but those are the three that I know right now, uh, also definitely like, share, subscribe, super thanks, special chat, buy some available books, support us on Patreon, just like your boy, EJ the Supreme, Big Sis Casey, and the Iceman Universe. Hang out with us on Discord and Facebook and let's sell each other some stuff in the McCary app. Along with this, check out the content that our Patreons have, you know, with, from fitness and, say, sports and cookie crumbles, food reviews, fan-made videos and little, and they vlogs here and there, and, and Nitty and Naruto reactions, all of that good stuff. And be the next Patreon for the channel there to support us. And we'll see y'all in the next video. Take care, everybody. Without further ado, close out on this note there. You know, the, the, as they say in the movie, the pow may the power protect you. Good luck, Rangers. As see. well as may the power be with you. Mm -hmm. To you, Jason David Frank. The power has always been with you, and now... We care. We will carry the the power from your spirit within us. Yes, and may the power be with you forever. Mm, yeah, with all with all of us, including the rain, including the remaining rangers. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone, and Godspeed, Jason David Frank. Love, love you all, everyone. <laughs>